Hello viewers and welcome to a new STM32 World video. Now this video is going to be probably a bit of a teaser video. Uh, I just ordered a stack of PCBs uh, from DLC PCB. Uh, so uh, sometimes next week I should probably be able to do a an unboxing video on those and some test uh, videos on those but I want to talk about what I actually ordered uh, before I move on. Now, viewers of this uh, YouTube channel uh, will have seen me use uh, my own development board for STM32 a number of times. I designed this uh, years ago and uh, I have been using them almost daily since I designed them. The idea was rather than having a single MCU board with uh, LEDs and what have you not. I wanted to make a modular system so you could take an MCU board and then you can take whatever peripheral boards you're interested in in a particular setup. And here's an example of me. Uh, I'm actually using a stack of these. Uh, you can see that, well, you can't see that, but there is a programmer which is like an ST-Link device identical to my Jolt Connect, which I have talked about a lot, and there's an MCU board, and I have just wired up one of these uh, RGB LED uh, thingies on that. And uh, I have been using this uh, for a long, long time. I have actually designed I have made quite a lot of these boards. I have made MCU boards. At least two different is uh, in production. Oh, not in production, but I have them. Uh, the programmer, uh, memory, uh, various forms of memory, uh, a CAN transceiver uh, board, an SD uh, card breakout board, and uh, uh, well, probably the reason why I have this is I was playing around with actually doing an uh, RGB LED array thing on this but i uh, kind of stopped making these because uh, there was a number of issues with the design that basically meant uh, it couldn't really be produced let me show you uh, do a little uh, sidetrack sorry uh, back because before i made these stm32 world board um i used this little thing quite a lot. Uh, there's still a link on the uh, STM32 World uh, site and it's an ST-Link programmer. Do it yourself, ST-Link. If you go to the home page, you will see it down here. DIY STM32 programmer ST-Link. And the reason why I never produced these but was because while they work fine for me, uh, they were not really uh, it wasn't possible to actually produce these in any quantity without um, um, it just it would cost too much to produce them that's why i made what i now call the jolt connect the jolt connect the difference is that the jolt connect which i have here can be produced without me having to hand solder a stack of components on this it basically it can comes from a factory any manufacturing shop uh, house glc pcb pcb way whatever uh, i can find that is uh, offering me the best deal uh, can produce these little programmers and the same thing goes with the uh, stm32 world board it simply wasn't possible to produce them and the biggest problem with the stm32 world boards which you can see here a stack of them was that header. The idea was that these boards, let me uh, show you here, uh, make myself big, they have some headers, some headers that goes through with a very very long pins so you can stack them on top of each other. The idea is probably quite inspired by um, Arduino boards with that hat you put on. Uh, that the idea was also there that you could stack multiple on top of each other but it works better on Arduino because they only have one row. I have two rows here and the problem with these is that the moment you bent one of these 
it becomes almost impossible to put them together again. And uh, they are also very, very hard to separate. They stick very, very hard. So they are impossible to separate without bending the pins. Literally, I found a technique where I sort of wiggle it a little at the time uh, by putting fingers in between. But no, it, it just it didn't work. So the idea I had was to move this onto a different system. And rather than having the boards with the connector on the board, I forgot to mention that these are also very expensive. Um, the, these headers, the cheapest I can find them is about 80 cents a pop. So each board in cost, each board will have in headers alone about a dollar sixty. Which, in terms of production, if you make a lot of them, it it adds up. It, it's a significant part of the the cost of these board. If you look at this board on top here, it is a. Let me remove myself. Final thing I should say about these, uh, the reason why I didn't produce these STM32 world boards is those uh, headers, uh, uh, connectors on the side and streamline will be a passive backplane. That means that the cost of connectors will be on the backplane alone. And these uh, connectors are also quite a lot cheaper, They're about 50 cents uh, or something like that for one of those connectors. So a board here, I, I shown here with five of these. Uh, this is a PCIe uh, X4, I believe they're called. PCIe X4 connectors. They got uh, 96 uh, pins, so they are quite dense. Um, and they're about 50 cents a pop. So a backplane like this with five, uh, there's about a couple of dollars, uh, $3 in connectors. Uh, and as a consequence of that, the boards themselves will be very, very cheap because no connector is needed. It is just an edge connector that slides into these uh, boards. Now, these are presumably quite cheap because they're used in PCs. So every single PC that get manufactures have a stack of these. So they are readily available and they are very, very cheap. So uh, let me... Um, show you what I've been up to with this uh, streamline. I have mentioned this before in a video a couple of months ago uh, that I had the plan of doing it, but I haven't shown much. So basically what I've done is I've, I've sort of agreed uh, with a, an IO map. So you have these pins uh, A and B uh, on these uh, PCIe and uh, it is A1 up to A49 and B1 up to B49. Uh, so so it's 98 uh, connectors. I think I said 96 before, did I? Uh, there's 98 uh, pins uh, that are available. And I have been mapping those to typical STM32 um, pins. Now, one of the reasons, by the way, I should mention this, that I don't call this STM World uh, Mark II or Next Generation. I played around with those names. Um, but a simple fact is, I actually want to make CPU boards that are different. I want to do ESP32. I have been playing around with the ESP32 uh, quite a lot. And I'm also planning to possibly do a Raspberry RP2350 board in this. And the idea being that the, you can have a, as an MCU board, you can have an STM32 and then you can add the peripheral boards, whatever you want. But the same peripheral boards can then be used with an ESP32 or a, a Raspberry Pi. Uh, Pico, I believe that. So it, it, it's just about having that flexibility of putting whatever you want or need together. But let me show you a bit about these are now ready to order. Not a hell of a lot of peripheral boards, um, but I'm pretty much done with the basics. So if we look at the, where do we have it? Here we have the 
the backplane uh, and I have made one backplane with five connectors. That is the one that is shown on the website with a rendering. Uh, but it is entirely possible to make backplanes with more. Uh, I made five for a simple reason that uh, it could fit within uh, 100 millimeter uh, width. Uh, if you make more than five, you will have to be a bigger board and that does make it a little bit more expensive to make them, but it's entirely possible. And if this gains traction and popularity, then I'll definitely uh, probably, <laughs> I'll make boards with more uh, IO uh, connectors. So this is how it will look. Uh, and early, I think maybe even the rendering, no, I changed that, uh, but I actually put an IDC connector over here on the first designs. The IDC connector is identical, but it's got a fout around it. Uh, but in reality, these pin headers are easier to work with because typically on these pins, you would either connect something or you would use a scope uh, to check one of these pins and it's a hell of a lot easier to connect the scope to these unshrouded pin headers uh, than it is to connect. So the back plane is essentially just a parallel bus. Uh, that pin goes to that pin, goes to that pin and so on and so forth. And the B goes to these on this side and they are just mapped through in a parallel manner. It's a completely passive backplane. There is no electronics on it. I have been contemplating whether I should put a power supply on it, uh, decided against it, whether we should put LEDs on it, decided against it. It's a passive backplane and a parallel boss. And by making that decision, it becomes very, very easy to make alternative MCU boards. The moment you start focusing on one, uh, you are limiting yourself. By doing it this way, it becomes very, very unlimited what I can do with those. I have also designed a couple of tools, uh, a couple of boards. Um, let's start with this one, Streamline Programmer, which is a program as it's like the Jolt Connect, which I have here. So it is simply a programming board and here you can get an idea of how these ports uh, will be looking. Uh, there will be a USB-C uh, connector over here. There will be an approximately the same location if you have multiple ports with USB-C. Uh, these will supply power uh, to the boss. It's got quite a beefy because I've got tons of space. Uh, so quite a beefy uh, linear regulator here. Maybe I will change to some switch mode later. I don't know. It's got some LEDs up here. It's got an MCU crystal, everything. You just plug it in. A lot of these boards will be uh, flexible enough to, for example, my Jolt Connect will have a UART. So I have here uh, different jumpers so you can select what UART on the target board is going to be used. Uh, this will, of course, be documented in great detail on the STM32 World Viki. I've also made a MCU board. So let's look at the MCU board. Dum, dum. There. Uh, now, with 98 connectors, uh, I decided that the maximum um, in number of STM32 that can actually wear every single uh, GPIO on the board can be broken out are these 100 pins. Uh, where are we? We are up here. So the 100 uh, pin uh, STM32 with 100 pin STM32, every single GPIO can be broken out on the header. Uh, it becomes a little bit busy. And of course, if you have STM32s with less pins, this becomes quite a lot easier, uh, but this is the maximum that is possible to break out. Uh, if you have STM32s with more pins than this, uh, there will be some pins uh, that you can't uh, get down on the header because you simply don't have enough pins. Um, as usual, there are some jumpers that have some functionality. I haven't really documented that here, but it will, of course, be documented on the 
STM32 World uh, website. Uh, there's a lot to document and a lot to tweak and tilt, but I got these boards that I have shown so far are ready to order. I'm also working on a few more <laughs> just for the hell of it. Uh, I was playing with, uh, where is it? To using an F030. Uh, I haven't routed it yet and I haven't removed hall, but I simply took uh, the F407 board uh, and replaced it with one of those 20 pin uh, MCUs. This is, by the way, the cheapest MCU, uh, STM32 MCU available on uh, CPCB and uh, LCSE. It's about 60 cent in small quantities. Uh, it doesn't have USB, so I could get rid of all the USB stuff. And now I can get rid of half of these and uh, route up uh, and we're done and remove all these that I don't need anymore. Uh, that will be removed. It's a work in progress. Uh, it shouldn't take me long to get that done. I also have a couple of other uh, boards in work in progress. One of them being a, a LED array, obviously. So here we go, view 3D viewer. So it's simply an RGB LED array on a board like this. You can plug it in and play with all the LEDs. Um, so, uh, but, but that is kind of all I wanted to do in this video. It's just a little teaser of one, uh, what will happen. I mean, we hope to be able to sell these before Christmas. Uh, but there's a lot that needs to be done to uh, get it ready. We are currently working on how to ship these, how to ship these to the customers. Uh, I I mostly stay in Malaysia and at the moment it's quite expensive to send uh, stuff out of Malaysia to US. I can do it to Europe uh, quite easy, but US, uh, because of tariffs, the local post office don't want to touch it. They don't want to have anything to do with it. So I need to figure out a way to actually ship this primarily to the US. Uh, in a reasonable manner. Uh, Europe I can handle uh, the smaller boards like the Jolt Connect I can ha ha handle as well. Uh, will simply be sent as a letter. It's not a problem. Um, but things like the back plane here uh, that I need to find a way to ship that. Uh, work in progress. Work in progress. But if you stick on, if you subscribe to this channel, if you like this video, um, sometimes next week uh, we should receive a parcel with all these. Um, there are also some other goodies, but I will do that in a separate video. We have decided to use the Colibri board, uh, which is uh, sort of intended for home automation. Um, and that will be documented, that will be explained in another video, which uh, we're working on at the moment. So that will come later. Um, uh, we have, uh, so it'll be quite an unboxing video when all this arrives, probably sometimes uh, late next week. Uh, it should all be done. So that's about all I plan to say in this video as usual. Uh, please do like and subscribe. Please comment down below what you think about this idea. If you have any suggestions, what you would like to see, uh, please help me uh, to know what, what, what is interesting for the audience of this channel, because you are the one this has been made for, ultimately. Uh, so, so please uh, help me by telling me what we can do and, and what we should do and the direction we should go in. That's about it. As usual, have a wonderful rest of the day.